Big, big night in politics. We are still tracking results in the Senate, and with Democrat Mark Kelly winning in Arizona, the count is now officially 49-49, with just Nevada and Georgia outstanding. And in the state of Michigan, Democrats, what did they see? Huge historic wins this week. In response, the chief of staff of Michigan's Republican Party released a memo blaming candidates with ties to guess who? Donald Trump. He wrote this in part. There were more ads on transgender sports than inflation. We did not have a turnout problem. Middle of the road voters simply didn't like what Tudor Dixon was selling. Back with us tonight, Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow and MSNBC political contributor Matthew Dowd. He's also a former George W. Bush strategist and founder of Country Over Party. He is also born and raised in Michigan. Mallory, take us to your state. What are people telling you? Huge, huge win, huge week. This is a seismic shift in Michigan. We have not had a... Democratic Senate since before I was born. It has been almost 40 years since we flipped the Senate here in Michigan. We now have a Democratic trifecta. And I'll be honest, it's a little bit rich to read the GOP blaming Tudor Dixon for focusing too much on culture war issues like transgender kids playing sports when that's what every single attack ad against our incredible legislative candidates were all about. The entire party took a huge bet on culture war and conspiracies, and they lost. We've reached our limit of crazy. Michigan's not having it anymore. There you go. Matthew, how do you solve a problem like Donald Trump in Michigan and elsewhere? Who's the founder of conspiracy theories? DJT himself. That's a signature. Well, you know, Donald Trump obviously instigated a lot of this, but the problem is the Republicans had no courage and no principles to keep guardrails in place on them. So, yeah, we can say remove Donald Trump from the equation, but they knocked down every single guardrail. There's a complete mess in the Republican Party. And now they think once they remove Donald Trump, somehow the mess will get cleaned up. They they're seem to be unwilling to clean it up. They let the voters in their party take complete control in all of the craziness in this. And I think Michigan is such a perfect example of the contrast that voters wanted, which is crazy versus competency. People that stood for diversity and people that stood for you know multicultural society, people that stood for democracy and freedom against people that had no desire for diversity, no desire for multiculturalism. And Michigan showed that in spades. I'll add it, another strong woman that gets added to the mix that many people haven't, haven't focused on is the new majority leader of the state Senate. From, from the town my father was born in, Grand Rapids, which used to be Republican, she, Winnie Brinks is the new majority leader of the state Senate. So not only Mallory and Jocelyn Benson, and Dana and Dana Nessel and the governor, but this all of these strong, competent women have taken the place in power, and the voters in Michigan love it. Then Mallory, where does the party go from here? On one hand, you could say the left one, we can keep leaning to the left, or is it you captured a lot of independents, you captured a lot of middle of the road voters, maybe even some Republicans. Is the answer for Democrats, at least in Michigan, hang there in the center? That's where you'll catch the most. You know, Matthew brings up a huge point in, in Senator Winnie Brinks, by the way, the first woman majority leader in state history, which is incredible. But I looked at our caucus the other day when we all got together and from the top to the bottom, from Whitmer on down, we are competent, passionate people. And I think we have to get out of this mindset that there's some flank of the party that's going to have all the answers. We had incredible candidates who are perfect representations of their districts. The reality is we have 40 years of an agenda that's been building up in Michigan and a Republican Party that has been leading with minority rule with heavily gerrymandered districts for decades. So we're going to be thoughtful. We are going to be uh, compassionate. We're going to bring everybody to the table, but we're going to follow in what Governor Whitmer has done so well, which is being progressive, pragmatic, getting things done, expanding economic 
economic opportunity, investing in education, and being incredibly aggressive on issues that matter, like voting rights, like abortion access, making sure we expand our Civil Rights Act to include the LGBTQ community and not attacking them. And we can do everything all at once in a way that is thoughtful and shows the rest of the country this is what a big tent party looks like when we're in charge. Mallory, I do think you've got a couple of libraries to get reopened in your state. Matthew, yes? The only thing I was going to say is the one problem I, I don't think they could deal with is the Detroit Lions. So until we, <laughs> until we can fundamentally deal with the Detroit Lions, which has been 50 years of losing all my entire life, I, I'm not going to be happy. I'm happy about the election results. I'm not going to be happy until we deal with the Detroit Lions. Hey, we've got okay, that can be 40 years in the making, 50 years in the making. We can do it. <laughs> okay, well, then you have hope. Matthew, let's go from your second home state, Texas. Michigan is proof that Democrats can win big in a purple state. What could happen in Texas? Clearly, Beto, a very strong, very popular candidate on the national stage, couldn't get it over the line or even close in Texas. Is he ever going to have a path there? Well, well, I think the Democrats will eventually have a path here. Eventually, we've been talking about this for a while, eventually, because of the demographic change and all of that. I think the problem for Beto, and he was a very in inspirational figure to a lot of people, but he entered that race. If he had not run for president in, two, in 2020 and just skipped that, had, it was a close race for Ted Cruz, he would have been a very popular figure entering the race. He was not a popular figure. He was actually less popular than the incompetent governor that we have, or Greg Abbott that we have here. And so I, I think there needs to be a whole new range of candidates. The, a candidate for lieutenant governor that ran for the third time statewide and lost here. And so I think we have, the Democrats have to bring in a whole new round of candidates. But two, there's a lot of work to be done. Nine million registered voters in Texas didn't vote. Nine million Why? registered voters. Why? Voters in Texas didn't vote because I don't because the way the state has been acting is many of them feel like, oh, it doesn't matter. Republicans are going to run. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And they need to see a bright spot. They need to see a spot. It's going to take time. And all these things take time. But I think one recruit new candidates that inspire people that haven't lost before. That's a big part of it. But two, the work has to be done. And so starting at the local level, I think it will get there. Um, but in this case, you had two unpopular candidates running against each other for governor, and the voters went with the incumbent governor in the course of this. And I mean, that's just the reality of it. But there's a lot of work here in Texas to do to make it a swing state. Does that mean you're going to dip your toe back in, Matthew? You had your eye on that lieutenant governor seat. Well, I, 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 as I step back from it, and I obviously I always want to serve and do whatever I can, but as I step back from it, I think we need to make room, especially me, white male Christians, need to make room at the table or re open the table up and make room for candidates of diversity. And when candidates of diversity got in the race, there was an African-American woman and a woman legislator from Dallas got in. I said, I had promised I would step back and make room at the table for that. I wish the other white male candidate had done the same thing in that race. I think that's, I mean, there's many ways to serve, as Mallory knows. They're serving in elected office. They're serving in all kinds of ways. All of us have to find the spot we serve. And so I will serve the state and the country in any way I can. I don't know if it's running for office. Well, maybe the Detroit Lions need a new water boy. If so, <laughs> you might be the guy. I'm there. My I'm friend, there. <laughs> My friend Matthew Dowd, Mallory McMorrow, thank you both for joining tonight.